Let's continue our conversation with President and CEO of the Four Acre Group, Lori Wolf. Hi. Thanks, Lori, for hanging with us a little longer Absolutely. today. So, some of the things that you were talking about uh, in our earlier conversation were the high numbers of employment in rural Alaska, especially. Alaska already has a higher percentage of uh, employment than the national the national picture, but in rural Alaska, it's especially so. What's going on there? Well, it's just partly where the work, of course, where the work is. So work is more consolidated into fewer numbers of uh, employers. And so healthcare is really driving that conversation, no doubt about it. Um, and also our regional native nonprofit uh, organizations, which so um, in every region, there's a regional nonprofit, native nonprofit, who's providing the human health and human services functions in a, in a whole region. Of course, they're, they're big, huge employers. So between those and healthcare, they're really our largest employers and they're and therefore driving those conversations. Um, and, and then the conversation becomes relative across our state about kind of where jobs are and where the and where populations are. You know, we have a um, a low population kind of relatively speaking, but it's highly dispersed. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take that into account when you're thinking about the jobs and the percentages and all of that. We spoke earlier about the recession the fact that there's been multiple uh, years of budget cuts now. And you address this a bit, but um, although the picture isn't quite clear yet, what can you tell us about how this may be stressing the budgets and the fundraising capability for nonprofits? Well, I think what we've seen over the years in 2009 when the federal and, and eight when the federal recession hit, um, you know, what we saw was that our nonprofits that uh, were highly donor focused, that were really engaging donors in, in the way that really worked for them about the things that they cared about and really having those meaningful connections and relationships, they fared fine. Uh, uh, not fabulous, but fine in relative terms. I think our organizations who are more transactionally driven uh, maybe more emphasis on a single event or a single transaction, they may be um, um, hurting a little bit more um, in this economy because these are, we're less in this place um, going to be thinking about the transactional exchange, more focus more on the transformational philanthropy. People tend to continue to do that uh, transformational philanthropy, that community investment, people still seem to do that in good economies and bad, and we have seen no sign of that waning. Um, we, there's always a, a wonderful story that someone has about, you know, oh, I've been in a, I did an event and oh, it didn't work out, and that it's an easy blame. I'll just blame the economy for that. And we're not so sure that that's a, such an easy blame, um, and we just invite organizations to kind of think. Uh, really strategically about how they're doing their philanthropic work. So I think there's a combination of um, Alaskans really thinking about what really matters to them and how they want to invest in their community and really valuing the things that nonprofits bring to their communities in terms of quality of life and um, supports for their families and their planet and their pets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then the way that nonprofits are doing the work. So I think we kind of have both responsibilities on that end. I think the bright star in philanthropy, though, is the rise of family foundations in our state. We're seeing more and more family foundations emerge as a as a, f a vehicle for uh, philanthropic giving, and uh, we're seeing a emergence of community foundations across our state. So there are really some wonderful bright spots. Um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Pickle Give program surpassed a million dollars uh, for this year, and so you know I th it's not all doom and gloom. I, I know mm -hmm. that makes for a better news story, but um, we're just not seeing as much doom and gloom as I think as, as some would like us to talk about. That said, philanthropy will never outpace the investments of. Uh, or, or, um, uh, or replace the investments that we get from our partnership with government. And we have to find that leverage point between those two sources. And, and I want to talk a little about that, uh, taking federal and state dollars and leveraging those. I know that overhead is always a consideration with nonprofits because governments are going to look at what your overhead is before they, they make those grants and um, give that money to the nonprofit side. Talk about how that's leveraged then and, and helps to create other revenue. Well, first I'll just address something that we often refer to in our world as the overhead myth, this notion that we can have wonderful quality, fabulous programs without actually having people 
or places to run those that programs. That they're all supposed to be volunteers? It's every supposed to be volu everybody's supposed to be volunteering. Everybody, nobody's supposed to be making a livable wage. Nobody needs health insurance. You know, it's all fine. You're, you just love your job so much, you're supposed to do it for free. Um, the Department of Labor might have something to say about that. I certainly <laughs> would have something to say about that. Um, so we want to, you know, always are working to dispel that overhead myth. If you have a wonderful, quality, fabulous program, it's probably because there are amazing, fabulous, wonderful people doing that work who deserve to be paid a livable wage. And um, that's that's part of the work that we do. Again, we're a very human-centered sector, um, and and we need we need our folks to be healthy. So, um, uh, you know, of course, there's a line in the sand around that, and everyone can draw that line somewhere uh, on their own, but we just say we want to dispel that myth as much as we can. I also think that there's some myth making out there that nonprofits are kind of flimsy with people's money and, and that just couldn't be further from the truth. Of course, we're amazingly innovative and um, thinking about how every dollar can be leveraged for another dollar. And we've just seen one story after another of really amazing, you know, rather, can, be, can be very small investments or, or rather large investments from any number of government entities um, being leveraged for, for other sources of revenue, either philanthropic or or earned revenue even. So a little investment can go a long way. Well, I, I noticed that one of the stories that you highlight in the report, which we'll link to on our website, is uh, a story about how helping people stay in their homes, people that have disability challenges, the, the uh, savings for finding innovative ways of helping people stay at home rather than having to go into some sort of assisted living is quite large. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, our nonprofits are working so hard every day to help people find that sense of independence. And um, again, it's not it's not either or. For some people, that they need to make, you know, everyone needs to make their own choices. I think what our nonprofits do is create choice, mm -hmm. and and in so doing, save state money from do, while they're doing that. Um, and um, but at the same time, our nonprofits need that state investment in order to do that work. Again, that public-private partnership, so critical to making that whole system of choice really work for everyone. Um, so it's, it, and we, we just find that over and over again. The, the report is full of stories like that, mm -hmm. or leveraging volunteer time with money. I mean, there's so many different ways that we're leveraging those resources. And volunteering, much higher percentage in rural Alaska than urban Alaska. What's yeah. happening there? Well, I think, you know, we if you've traveled in rural Alaska, you know we have close-knit communities, people, everybody, I've lived in Alaska my whole life, you know, it doesn't take long for, you know, to play the point degree of separation between each other, and, you know, we're great. Alaskans are wonderful at helping out their neighbor. Um, you know, you get stuck on, the, stuck on the road, everyone's jumping out of their car and helping you out. They don't ask you, you know. It's just part of the life. That's just who you are, yeah. right? And, and no one asks you anything except where do you need help, right? And, right? and that's the spirit of Alaska. I think that's really what makes Alaska work. We rank fourth in the nation overall for volunteerism, both in urban and rural Alaska. So we we get it. We know how to help our neighbor, um, and we don't ask a whole bunch of questions while we're doing it. But sure, in in, in rural Alaska, the numbers show out that um, there is more volunteering in rural Alaska. And again, I just think that's how we network and connect and make community. Mm -hmm. uh, not not overly surprising. In a more dispersed population, again, like in an urban center, maybe a little. You have to put in just a little bit extra effort to make that volunteerism work. Um, but it's, it's all possible. If people want to volunteer, there's lots of places to do it. Well, thank you again for staying here and, and uh, helping us better understand the nonprofit world in Alaska. Excellent. Thank you so much.